What's up? What's up, my kings and queens? It's your boy Rico Els, aka Suave, aka wearing trench coats in the summertime because man's not hot. This is the first episode of So Disrespectful. Plenty more is up to come. Well, we're going to talk about some sports topics. We're going to talk about the Super Teams. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl. We're going to talk about the trades that just happened. And then we'll have a little final thoughts just from my heart, a little inspiration, along with talking about, well, as you can see with the hat. I'm going to talk about the Washington Redskins as well. So go ahead, kick back, relax, grab some popcorn, get a little Kool-Aid, and let's get on with the show. You heard? You are now entering the world of Yeah, you already know. So we're going to first start talking about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. We already know the final score is 13-3. New England Patriots beat the Rams. Technically, it should have been 16-10 because the kicker for the Patriots missed the field goal. And Jared Goff missed a wide open Brandon Cooks. Want to throw to him real late. Not seeing Devin McCourty running towards him like he owed him some money. to knock the ball away. The thing that got to me about this game was maybe it really shouldn't have been the Rams in there. I know New Orleans. I know you're gonna thank me for this one, and y'all like me for this one. Well, yeah, I really should have believed it should have been Patriots versus the Saints. Honestly, second year in a row, seems like Drew Brees just cannot get over this lucky thing that happened to the opposite teams. First, you know, you had the whole Vikings thing. Now you have this with the missed PI call. Honestly, it's so much, but let's go back to the Super Bowl. The Rams. The Rams. Averaging 32.9 points per game. The Rams. Second in total offense. The Rams with Todd Gurley. If not one, possibly the best running back in the NFL. The Rams. Offense. So explosive. Three points. Let me do my Stephen A. Smith impression for this one. Three points. Three points. No, 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 no. You could three points to be the highest, one of the highest offense in the game. That, that's blasphemous. No, 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 take three points. But yes, three points. But the main question about the whole game comes from Mr. McVay, who was once with us and his question was was Todd Gurley healthy Todd Gurley was he healthy Mr. McVay what's your answer to that Todd Gurley's own admission he was not himself in the NFC championship game what if anything are you doing through the course this week to keep tabs on where he's at mentally and physically well I think really you know you, you see a guy that's mentally tough I, I think Tom what says as much about Todd as anything is the way that he handled it right after you learn about people when they do go through uh, you know, a little bit of adversity and couldn't have been more proud and pleased with just the way that he handled that, demonstrated, you know, the mental toughness that we expect. You know, you show me anybody that's great in anything that they do, I'll show you somebody that's persevered, uh, demonstrated that mental toughness to overcome some obstacles and some adversity. And, and I think a large part of, specifically when you talk about last week's game, was, was a result of, you know, some of the things in terms of the play selection. I got to do a much better job for Todd to get him opportunities to get going. Love the way that he responded, though, and, and fully expect him to, to be the Todd Gurley that we all know and uh, he's going to be a big part of this game. Okay. We're going to see the old Todd Gurley. Better play calling for him. Todd Gurley had over 1,800 yards from scrimmage. If he's not the but one of the best running backs in the NFL. We're going to see the old Todd Gurley. A healthy one. Okay. So, please inform me Todd Gurley had 12 touches in the Super Bowl. Biggest game of his career. So we're going to share the ball with CJ Anderson. He had nine touches. You know, the game was close the whole entire time. It wasn't the, it wasn't the fact like the Patriots was up 28 and y'all only had three. You literally just kept running and running and chopping him down. You know, John Gruden, pound the rock. You could have did that. But he's healthy. 
What? We do know there's 60 minutes in a football game, right? Um, the score basically was close. 45 minutes of the game. The Patriots basically just did what the Rams should have been doing. Patriots ran the ball 32 times, 154 yards. Rams ran the ball 18 times for 62 yards. And technically, the only reason they got to 154 yards because Sony Michelle and Rex Burkhead had combined had a 52-yard run. Sony had 26. Sony Michelle had 26. Add them up, math. So if your passing won't work it. Why not just go to your bread and butter, which is the run? You know what it feels like? It almost feels like you wanted Jared Goff to be the MVP instead of Todd Gurley. And now that feels like the Seahawks versus the Patriots game when everyone, including your mother, Stevie Wonder, I mean, everyone knows that give the ball to Michelle Liz. They couldn't stop him. Two yard line. But we already know that's really was a political type of play. You know, Russell Wilson would throw a slant on two yards. And then when they asked Pete Carroll in the game, why do you call that? He called it a throwaway play. Throwaway. In a Super Bowl. Technically the last play of the possession to win the game. We're going to call it a throwaway play. Because we already know if Russell Wilson would have threw that touchdown, he would be MVP. If Marshawn Lynch would have ran that touchdown in, he would be MVP. Now, could you imagine the press conference if Marshawn Lynch was to win the MVP? Y'all want to try again, huh? So y'all going to try again? That's what we're going to do. We're going to try one more time. One more time. One more try. One more try. That's, we got one more try. I mean, y'all can try all y'all want, but that's what we got. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I just thank you. I mean, I don't know. I just. Uh, you just gotta love Marshawn Lynch. But all in all, Patriots won the Super Bowl, 13 to three. Brady got six rings, tied with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We already know. You're going, coming right back. Probably the NFL is going to find some way for him to get seven so he can break the Steelers record that he have the most Super Bowls in NFL history. So some of us may deny it. Others may already know. But we love the NFL. It's America's game. Sorry, baseball. But well, on to the NBA. And we're going to talk about super teams. Now, this phrase has been around for a very very long time it just seems the fact that it's more coming out now than it was back in the days technically we did have super teams but the things were so different is the fact that it's the players are nowadays making the decision to be super teams whether back in the days was was the office you have super, the balls themselves was considered a super team bird parish mikhail Lakers, Magic, Kareem, Worthy, even the Sixers, if some people would say, with Barkley was on the team, and then you had the Bulls. I ain't got to re read that, Ross. I'm pretty sure we all know it. So, technically, these teams have, they have been super teams, but what's the problem now? The problem is, and I know I'm going to get judged by this, and I definitely know that there going to be some in the comments or someone go inbox me about this. There's no such thing as competition. The way we grew up in playing basketball was simply this. I want to go against the best. I don't want to play with the best. I am a phenomenal. I'm going to move on by saying this. I'm a phenomenal Madden player. And I play 2K. And I also play Call of Duty. Now, let's just say in any one of those games, I have another player that's saying, I'm better than you. 
We play. He wins. We play again. He wins again. We play a couple more times. They keep winning. Now, the way I grew up, I'm not going to join that guy that keeps beating me. I'm going to go back to the drawing board, see why I'm, why I'm losing so bad, and work on my craft. So when I come back, I'm going to beat you because I want to establish myself as the best. The issue with this is, is in NBA, you know, I understand you want to be on a winning team, but technically that's not really your decision to, to go around and uh, recruit players. That should be the league office. You basically telling me the league office don't know how to do their job, and the players do. So technically, get them off the, out of here then, and let the players run the team. That's the issue with the super teams now. So many people say LeBron started it. I say he started the trend of the decision, but but technically, I have no problem where LeBron went to. He went to the Heat. Technically, he wasn't even that good before he came through. And you ever giving so much credit to LeBron? Y'all forget about Dwayne Wade, right? Wade took a pay cut for Boss and LeBron to come. So technically, why nobody's getting on Wade for bringing those two guys to his team? The issue with LeBron is, did we really have to have a VH1 special? I know it was on ESPN, but that's what I felt. I felt like a, a real. Look like at looking at love and hip hop. The decision, really? I mean, you could have just said, just put a tweet, a report, something. Did we really have to have a special on TV? Like seriously? Like 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 it was like the state of the UN address for the president. That's the issue. Now, now it's the Golden State Warriors, and it seems like everybody wants to play with them. My issue with that is three of those guys that they got in their squad was actually drafted by them and they just built them up. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. They were drafted by the Warriors. Mark Jackson was their coach. So he was training them, but they needed need a little over the hill, so they got Steve Kerr. They've been working with their team within but it seems like everyone knows that what's joined the Warriors so we know it can win. Here's the biggest issue with that. It's the NBA rules. The NBA rules caters to the shooters. It caters to the offense. Could you imagine if guys like Bill Beer, Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley, Shaq, the bad boys of Detroit, the Knicks, Xavier McDaniels, Hornets with Grandma Mallory Johnson and Lonzo Moore. Those guys that if you go on to come in this paint, you will get touched. Days of Michael Jordan with the hand check and the elbow check. Do you imagine if those type of things would have happened nowadays what would happen? That's the issue. And as so much of us old school players like Shaq and other other ones and old school fans like myself I would love to go back to the old school rules just to see if they can succeed in the newer day players guys would just get a breathe on as a foul James Harden gets fouled just by dribbling to the paint literally and he does about 15,000 step backs but let's see what happens if you had guys go inside the paint and you caught an elbow a couple of times. Well, let's listen to some of our analysts on what they believe and think about super teams in the NBA. I just wish that, uh, you know, a, 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 a few more of the guys would say, you know what, I want to beat this guy rather than join Play him. with that yeah, guy. Yeah, because I never would have said, okay, you know what, we keep losing to Scotty and, and the Bulls. I'm gonna go play with the Bulls. You know, I had had a lot of times where I tore my house up because we lost and we just kept losing and just. Uh, you know, Michael Jordan said something to me after the 1996 East Conference Finals. He said, "Before you succeed, you must first learn to fail." So the reason I, I lost a lot of times is just helped me get over. It. And then once I finally got over the hump, you know, I was able to you know win three in a row. 
I, I still I, – I don't think anything wrong with guys being a free agent, serving their team, and when their contract is up, they decide where they want to go and play and what city they want to be in. I'd rather live in certain cities than live in – Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. No, 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 no. That's not what you're saying. I think what you're saying, the question is, is it bad for the league? No, it's not. It's always been. When I was growing up, the Lakers or the Celtics were going to win. Nobody else had a chance. Yeah, but they did it the right way, Kenny. Why is that right? It's not right. It's still a super team. I don't think – listen – if, Red all back like, no, hey, guys, did, did anybody say anything bad system. about Oklahoma City? They just, we're going to draft well. We don't Charles, want, it wasn't diluted either. We have 30 teams now. Yeah, but like, I'm saying, man, but guys man, never got... Is it a cop-out for the players? Hey, listen, like, let's ask a real question. You know, is it a cop-out for the players? Yeah, that's, what, that, that's my is point. Is it a cop-out? There's a lot of what prideful... Is get, there's what a lot of prideful... Because he stayed in Indiana 18 there's years. There's a lot of prideful guys that are on this stage right here. It's easy to jump. Let me ask Shaq this. Would you have ever called Charles up and said, hey, come help me win a championship? I need you. That's basically what we're saying that no, but, these guys did, okay, but, but, all right? But, 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 I would never have called Michael up and said, hey, can I come play okay, with you? Okay, but hold on. In the middle of his career, beginning of his career, no. At the end of his career, like I did Carl Malone, yes. You know, and I have no problem with yeah, that. Yeah, in the, yes. I get, in I the career, no yes. Problem. At the like end, of the beginning, of, at the beginning of the career, the middle of the career, when I'm you trying wanted to be his head in. Exactly. exactly. You wanted to go against exactly. the best. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. First. That's exactly. the point. What's the difference? These, exactly. guys, these guys the are difference? in their prime, teaming up, and I would never. I wanted. I wanted to beat but, Michael yeah, Jordan. No, I don't want to team with him. I don't care the beginning, middle, or end. It is a big difference. I'm gonna just tell you. I'm gonna tell you what everybody else. Everybody else did it. Just the difference between my opinion. You're talking to guys that had to lead their team and it was on their back. So when I was in Sacramento, it was me or it was going to play with Tim Duncan. I felt at that time, no, I want to play against him and I want to win it without him. Now, that's a hell of a gamble because you didn't win it. Four but, more championships but, you would have been walking around with. That's right. No but question. It, that, that's right. But see, unlike you, it was my decision to say this is my team. And if I don't beat him, then the hell with it. But I made the decision. So I could have called and done that. And at times... When you get older, you may regret that. You may want a ring. I'm not saying it's great or it's honorable. All I'm saying is that I think you're looking at it from a different position. No, I'm looking I at it from a different I'm saying that that's fine what you did, but it's also fine what they're doing because it's no different. At the prime of your career. Is- Whoa. Talk about debate. But I love debates. Hey, but super teams, are they good for the NBA? Or are they bad? My opinion is 50 50. Bad, everybody want to join them. Good, because possibly everybody wants to beat them. So, I'll say leave your comments down below. What you think about the NBA? Is Super Teams good or bad? How about changing the playoff set schedule? Instead of eight teams from the West and eight teams from the East, how about just 16 of the best teams in the NBA pair battling each other? Then now the season would mean something. So, that's just my opinion. I mean... It is what it is. This is the nowadays things, which is everybody wants to play together, play with your friends, instead of playing against us, see who's the best. That's the new generation. It is what it is. This ain't the old generation we grew up with. It's the new 2000, the new millennials. We just got to watch the NBA and hopefully it'll change one day. But now is the trade talks. Now, I'm going to start with the winner. I got to get to the Sixers. The Sixers got rid of Marquette Fultz. Whew, I know they're happy. And got Jonathan Simmons and a 2020 first round pick from the Thunder. Remember, I say they're going to be a good, decent team. They might actually challenge the, the Celtics and the Raptors. Of course, you know, you got Jimmy Butler, who sometimes gets on my nerves. Well, you got Ben Simmons, and Jordan B, to me, could be one of the best big mans in the NBA. So, they can get Celtics some issues. Also, they can get the Raptors some issues. So, the loser. My favorite team, the Bulls. I think we we lost. We're the biggest loser. That's just me because we gave away Jabari Parker and um, Bobby Portis. They got Otto Porter. Why well, Shaq in the food? You understand know what I mean? But if I take a step back, the real loser is the Lakers. Honestly, there's been so much talk of y'all getting Anthony Davis left and right, right and left. How y'all about to give them the whole entire starting lineup except LeBron James just to get Anthony Davis? And y'all didn't get him. Instead, Beasley gone. The other center gone. But you still got Lonzo Ball. Who, who for what I heard, is a terrible free throw shooter. 41%. <laughs> Lower than Shaq. <laughs> but, uh, hey. At least I still got to deal with LeVar Ball. 
And, you know, his son thinks he's better than LeBron. And they ain't, ain't going to win a championship without Lonzo. And, they gonna, and he could make LeBron better. Even though, technically, LeBron is considered a GOAT by some people. But Lonzo is going to make him better. That's trade talk. Go look at NBA. What you, what you expect is going to be the better team now after the trade deadline. Also, leave that in the comments as well to see who's going to be the better team going forward after All-Star break. And that's when really it kicks in. Because after All-Star is when everybody gets serious. But I got to say one thing. Washington Redskins. The Washington Redskins hurts your feelings in a whole lot. Because the Washington Redskins, as you saw this last season, 6-3. 63. I was one of those guys that was going around just blowing up the Washington Redskins. We're going to the playoffs. That's all I really wanted. The Super Bowl was a plus. That's an extra credit. I just wanted the playoffs. But what happened? Al Smith goes down. Right, here goes Cole McCoy. All right. Be right back, Cole McCoy. You've been in the system for a long time. You should know what to do and how to go by it. He gets hurt. Now, personally, and I know I'm going to get some backlash for this, and I don't care. That's why my show called Disrespectful, because I don't care about some feelings. I really wish the Redskins would have picked up Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I said it. But you still, you go get Mark Sanchez? Mr. Butt Fumble? Mark Sanchez, really? And then when that didn't work, you picked up Josh Johnson, who wasn't, didn't throw a pass for seven years. And technically, the game we won against the Jaguars... If the cornerback from the Jaguars don't know how to catch, James and Crowder would caught that pass. But it was called interception mid rap. But we were so happy for Josh Johnson. I, I, I'm happy for the guy. You know, I'm glad that maybe he probably had a chance to go to another team and get some money or stay with us. But at the end of the day, it just ain't working. I don't know about that one, Chief. We should have got Kyle Kaepernick. And in the off season, it's a it's a circus act with the Redskins. And it starts with the man who owns the team, Daniel Snyder. He has run this franchise into the ground. It is so terrible that even the other owners has an issue with this guy. Our former personnel have an issue with this guy. The only thing he cares about is the money. And he knows that the Washington Redskins fans, because we got zombies... That one's going to say, oh, I'll still follow the Redskins no matter what. And I'm still going to cheer them on good and bad. So you accept mediocre. That's all we've been. And you got Bruce Allen. Once again, we accept mediocre. And as much as Fire Bruce Allen trended on tweet on Twitter, <laughs> you know what Dan I looked at it and said, <laughs> hey, they funny. And threw it away. He ain't getting rid of no Bruce Allen. Bruce Allen is like his yes man. And if he ain't his yes man, just like some analysts said, Bruce Allen make out some pictures of Dan Snyder that if he fire him, I will show it to the public. Who knows? But my rant for the Reds is that I want us to do better. I want us to be better. We have actually decent talent at certain places to be better. The coach. I've been saying Jay Gruden is not a, not a head coach. He's a decent, he's a good office coordinator and maybe a great on um, quarterback coach, but head coach, I knew it. I can't say this whole entire season that the offense and the defense, just something was just different. It's like I always always question the heart. And when we let DJ Swedger go, he said the practice was laid back, which literally proves everything. The Redskins discipline won't there. The heart won't there. We probably have players complaining about practice. It's practice for a reason. I wonder what happened if people would complain to Bill Belichick about his practice and his things. You don't believe me? Ask Jerry Collins. Or Jamie Collins. Mess up his first name, don't even know. He's with the Browns. Either way, he's all he out of there. This is my rant about the Redskins. This season is the test. A lot of fans say they're canceling their season tickets. A lot of fans say they're not coming to the game. We may have 15, 16 away games the way it's looking like. Because if people are not coming to the Redskins game, 
who can fill the stadium but our opponents? Just like it been for the past few weeks when we played in NFL season. NFL is done, yeah, everybody. Got seven months to go to back to preseason. For now, we deal with basketball. Baseball is coming up as well. For some, hockey. Well, this is a, this. It's just a terrible thing to be a Redskins fan. The NBA right now. I just want to fast forward to the playoffs. See what's gonna happen. And MLB. Hey, I talk about them too. My favorite team is the Braves. When they start going, I start talking about the basketball, the baseball season too. And now, that was my first episode. Of so disrespectful. I want to leave this encouragement word for everyone who listens to the show. This right here is my dream. Don't ever forget your dream. Don't ever forget your passion. Everything is always learning in life, no matter what you do. Always believe in yourself and no one else believes in you. And always go hard for yourself. And you never accept good when great is available. That's my two cents right there. If I can do this, you can do it too. I had issues. I had strongholds. I, I'm human, just like you are as well. We all have something. But when you love something so bad, and you have passion for it, what you going to do to obtain it? They said, sky's the limit. I said, there's no limit. Break through the ceiling and see exactly what can be done for you. This is so disrespectful. Welcome, Welcome to So Disrespectful.